the capital sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh-huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh yeah, sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know, I was just saying. Eleanor, I need you to wait outside. The boss of the Blood Wings knows an exorcist is with us, but... Say no more. I'm sure they have clients who wouldn't appreciate their faces being known to the Abbey. Correct. Luffy said, you stay with Eleanor. Okay. I'll be back soon. My thanks for coming all this way. It's been a while. Would you care for a peach pie? What do you want? Oh, it would do you good to unwind every now and again, you know. Stretch a bow too far and its string is bound to snap. What do you want? <sighs> I would like you to escort this person out of the capital. Something smells about this, literally. Where am I taking them? Somewhere the authorities can't reach them. Sounds nice. I could do with such a place myself. No joke. We've been looking for a place to lay low, but we haven't had any luck yet. Well, come to think of it, I've heard a rumor that it's been a while since the Abbey has had any contact from Titania. Prison Island. Titania? But I thought the Abbey was in direct control of that place. Has the situation there gotten that bad since you left? Sometimes the answer is right under your nose. I think it might work. Yeah, could make a decent hideout, actually. The Therians could definitely get their fill of malevolence there. And the Abbey is far too goody-goody to imagine an escaped prisoner would ever return to her prison by her own free will. At the very least, I'd say it's worth checking out. I take it our intel has proven useful? It has. But before we go, have you heard anything about the Abbey harboring demons? I'm aware there was a demon in the villa, and that it has been relocated. Where? I can't say right this moment, but I'm sure we will find out shortly. All right, then in exchange for this passenger's safety, I want more information on that demon. You've got a deal. Aizen, I heard about your confrontation with Melchior. I'm sorry I wasn't able to help you find him. Yeah, you really blew that one, toots. It's fine. What's done is done. Have you given up on finding Eifried? No, I haven't. The crew and I will do whatever we can to quash the Abbey's plans. We do them enough damage, and the Abbey ought to start thinking about putting their hostage to good use. They'll set him up as a trap for us, and that's when we'll steal him back. Attacking the Abbey to create an opening for his escape. Clever. It's what Ifrib would do. That's all.
taking a while. Yeah. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. You are to protect the Malak Lafiset and bring him to the Logris Abbey headquarters. <laughs> What's wrong? Hey, you want to take a walk around the capital for a bit? I can show you some of the sights. But, um... You... You can't trust me. I understand. No, it's not that. I promise. I'd love to go sightseeing with you, Eleanor. Luffy said. Uh, well, we'll do it another time, okay? Why? It's just, you know, Velvet would get mad at us. Get mad about what? Ah, you're done. And who is this? A VIP entrusted to us by the head of the Blood Wings. We're stowing them away on Titania where the bad guys can't get at them. The prison island? Just who is this person? Didn't ask. What? <sighs> hey, something smells nice. Uh, uh huh? <laughs> Stop sniffing things. We're leaving. Can't believe you take a job without bothering to ask who you're escorting or why. The less you know, the less trouble you invite. Who is that caped man? I do not know, but his hawk seemed extraordinarily well trained. Trained to hunt, maybe? I'd imagine. <laughs> What is it? I smell something nice. <laughs> Indeed. The scent is somehow familiar. <laughs> it can't be. Hmm? What are you two sniffing at? Aha! They're bloodhounds on the hunt! But we're talking about hawks hunting, aren't we? Come again? Oh, I'm sorry. Please excuse my poor manners. This is bull crap. You're gouging us just because you can. Well, if you want to pay less, maybe you should go find someone more generous, hmm? Looks like they're at it again. Uh. Uh. Huh? What's happening? Benwick, snap out of it! Benwick! Huh? I was haggling for supplies, and... Tell you what. I'll give you a fair price. Actually, just take what you need. <clears throat> we should all endeavor to help contribute to the common good of humanity, rather than selfishly pursue wanton profit. What? Uh, are you sure? Uh... uh... No. Wait. What was I saying? You felt that too, didn't you, kiddo? Yeah. It disappeared, but I felt a strong force coming from somewhere to the north. It's called a domain. A Moloch's zone of influence. Wait, if it's north of here, then... The Empyrean's throne? 
Did that happen because of something Inominat and Artorius did? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. We should get far away from here, and quickly. So... the suppression... Well, that was certainly off-putting. But our job with Tabitha comes first. And we need a hideout soon, too. True enough. All right. We're safely on the rolling waves. Don't you think it's time you showed us your face, mystery monk? <laughs> You're right. My apologies. Percival! Percival Ilmid Asgard. Crowned prince and heir to the throne of the Midgan Kingdom. So he's next in line, is he? It looks like someone already had me figured out. Yes, your highness. I could tell from your fragrant wood scent, as only the royal family may wear it. But if I may ask, why? Must I explain myself to gain your aid? I myself could ask what an exorcist is doing consorting with members of the Underworld. I... I don't... It doesn't matter why you're here. On this ship, you're here for us to use to our advantage. Treat me as you will. It's not like I can ever go back. For a fellow born with silver spoons spewing out of his mouth, Prince Ipu is rather laid back. Prince Percival is an upstanding man, renowned for both his intelligence and his fair, just demeanor. It's widely believed that with him on the throne, Midgan's prosperity will continue and... Look, I played dumb earlier, but I smelled that scent too. He wore it for us to notice. He wanted us to know just what sort of position he held, and how useful he could be to us. He surprised me at least. Do you think we're being led into another trap? We definitely can't take that possibility off the table. When the time comes, he'll make a good hostage, if nothing else. Not if the ones we face are after his life, too. For now, let's just make sure we keep an eye on him. The Prince... He said he couldn't go back. I wonder why. The whole island's a prison. It's like a secret fort or something. Weirdly quiet, though. Yeah, I don't see a single exorcist on watch. Hmm. <laughs> Let's scope out the inside. An exorcist. Are you all right? Headless knights. She's dead. The headless knight is back. Think this is the demon that attacked her? Hmm. Another prison riot? Kurogane, dial. You two protect Kamoana and the prince. Understood. Point! 
No escape! Stupid monkey! You're giving me a head! Stay sharp! This one must have survived the riot! They were nothing. So did the Abbey actually fail to quell the riot? I find that hard to believe. The prison was heavily staffed with exorcists. Perhaps it was venomization. Venomization? A dark ritual. Forcing demons to eat each other in order to produce ever stronger demons. So the demons devoured each other, creating a demon too powerful for the exorcists to control? I imagine the riot didn't help. Now whose fault could that have been, I wonder? Whatever happened doesn't matter to us now. We need to focus on how to take this place for ourselves. That exorcist from before said something about a headless knight, right? That one's probably the leader. Then we hunt it down and destroy it. Until we capture the island, let's use this room for our staging ground. I'll leave the Prince and Kamoana to you two. Eliminate any enemies who come in. Understood. Don't expect much from me, but all right. Kamoana, if anything happens, call for me and I'll come running to protect you, okay? Okay. You stay safe too, Eleanor. Let's go. from all the big old demons roaming about. Hey, it's you again. Ah, I'm so busy! I'm so busy I can't even notice what's going on around me! You're not fooling anybody. Why bother? I was hoping to not have to deal with you guys. Whenever I run into you, I always lose so much money. Because Velvet always forces unreasonable demands on you? Oh, Miss Exorcist! Your concern warms my little turtle's heart. I'm not forcing anything. I just think he's trying to take advantage of us by fixing his prices well above market rate. Price fixing? As in deliberately marking up items so as to take advantage of the less fortunate? I was under the impression that the Abbey strictly forbade such unscrupulous business tactics. Ah! Perish the thought, Miz. No matter whens and no matter wheres, you can get whatever you needs for the same fair price. That's good to hear. Eleanor, give the nice turtles that smile he so desires. I'm sure running a business is hard work. Hang in there. M much obliged. <laughs>
From the way you were talking, it seemed like you had an idea of who was behind the riot. What happened here? I think someone in your position would know. There were reports of a large riot, but I was caught up in chasing you, so I heard little else. It was a small affair, really. Velvet Rokuro and I were being held on this island. Velvet instigated the other prisoners to riot so that we could escape. She used the prisoners? Yeah. You'd expect different from me? <sighs> How did it end? We didn't stay to see, but the prisoners were losing badly. At least, that's what it looked like. But if that was the case, then where did all the exorcists go? I know Oscar left to report the incident, but the other guards should have remained at their posts. Well, if they didn't flee, we have to assume they were all killed. By this headless knight, perhaps? Well, no sense losing our heads, I suppose. But it looks like we're in for a heck of a fight. All we have to do is mop up anyone who's left. be the product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our velvet, though. Where's his voice gonna come from? I don't know. Look inside. <laughs> Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah, I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed a Therian? Yeah, and a real hungry one at that. Every day, they would toss demons into its cell, it would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing, it was delivering to Enominot the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy, and it devoured its liberator. And it was then. It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother. Velvet, you're a Therian? This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian, harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Wow, 
The same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No? What's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned holy shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominat's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain? Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair?! He murdered my little brother, Luffy! And you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them. Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Luffy said, is Velvet truly Lord Artorius's younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius's training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. Turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Inominat through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area. 
and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorias. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Oh. I'm extra good at beating up the weak. <laughs> 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 <laughs>